thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that um, uh, you made it in spite of the cold weather. We're here uh, persevering and wanting to hear about the, the, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, so tonight, uh, the title for the message, the lesson that we're going to be starting is, Nicole, ready? Ask, seek, and knock. All right? Ask, seek, and knock. Uh, my last message was about hope, signs, wonders, and miracles. And the reason why I say this before I start uh, the, today's message is because in order to see and experience these four, which are to have hope, to see signs, to see wonders, and to see and experience miracles, you must be seeking God. Amen? You're not going to be uh, seeing signs and wonders if you're not seeking God. So seeking God is a decision, and we must learn how to seek God, and that's what we hope to establish uh, the, uh, tonight in Jesus' name. So seeking God, Hudson Church, requires effort. Seeking God requires dedication. Seeking God requires a decision and an action on your part. God will not do this for you. You have to make an active decision in Jesus' name. The word of God says that when you draw closer to God, he will draw closer to you. God is waiting for us with open arms, saying, my son, my daughter, come to me. I'm ready to, to give you an answer, everything that you need, but we have to make sure that we're not blinded by the things of this world, and we choose to seek the things of this world rather than the things of God. Amen? So it is important that we all have free will to seek God, and we also have free will not to seek God. That is nobody's responsibility. Mom and dad can't force you. Husband and wife cannot force you. You have to want to seek God for yourselves in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So tonight, let's begin building our foundation on this uh, series. We're going to start off with Psalms 24, verse 1. And let's all read together, please. Ready? Let's read. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Do we know that everything here on planet earth is the Lord's? Amen. Some of us think this is my stuff, your stuff, but everything at the end of the day, it all belongs to the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's what the scripture is telling us. Verse 5. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation, verse 6. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Salai. Salai means to pause and let's meditate on this. All of these things, to have the things of this earth are for us, but we must learn how to seek him and seek the face of God. Amen? So how can you see the face of God if nobody's seen God ever? Through his written word. And if you don't believe, if you don't want to study the word of God, if you don't want to spend time in the, in the scriptures, you're never going to find the face of the Lord and you're really not seeking God correctly. Amen? This is important. Please just pay attention. Psalm 63, verse 1. Let's all read together, please. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Let's stop right there. We must seek God early, not late in the night. Early in the morning, early in our situations, early we, when you meet someone, don't wait until you, you uh, spend a couple of months with that person and then seek God for opinion on that person. You must seek him early in everything, in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? When you're going to make a, a job change, when you're going to make a move of location, maybe a different uh, state, a different uh, a county, a different location, seek God early in that decision, not after you made the decision and things start happening wrong or not according to your plan, and then you start seeking God. God, did I make the right move? God, bless me. God, help me out in this situation. We need to learn to seek God how? Early. Amen? Let's keep on going. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Verse 2. <clears throat> so I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. When you come to the sanctuary, when you come to church, are you looking to see power of, from God? 
Not power from the pastor, but power from the word of God into your lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Verse 3. Because of your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall do what? Praise God. Right now, let's give a praise to God. Thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for your greatness, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for this day of life in Jesus' name. Amen? Thank you, Lord, that you shut off the heat in Jesus' name. <laughs> Verse 4. Go. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. In church, do we lift up our hands? Lift up your hands. Say, thank you, Lord. I'm lifting up my hands in Jesus' name. And those of you who don't lift up your hands, one day a police officer is going to say, stick up and surrender. Lift up your hands. And you're going to go like this. So you better learn how to lift up your hands to the Lord because the police will make you lift up your hands if you're doing things incorrectly. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're gonna, I don't want to lift up my hands. You're going to see you lift up your hands. Uh, so it's important. Learn to lift up your hands in, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. It's important when you seek the Lord, seek him with joyful lips, not crying lips, not sad lips, but joyful lips in Jesus' name. Amen? Pay attention to these little things that we might not be doing them in this moment, and we need to incorporate them in Jesus' name. Amen? So many times when we're seeking God, we're complaining, we're murmuring, and God, woe is me. Stop that and start seeking the Lord with joyful lips in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 6. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. It's important when you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep, thank you, God, for this day that you gave me. Thank you, God, that you're going to give me good sleep tonight in Jesus' name. Refreshing uh, sleep that you're going to give me in Jesus' name. A amen? amen? Remember the Lord in your bed uh, at night, in your night watches. If you wake up in the middle of the night, thank you, God, uh, that I'm still alive. Thank you, God, that I was able to go to the bathroom at 3 o'clock in the morning. Thank you, God, whatever it is. Remember the Lord in, in the night watches. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Verse 7. Please. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings, I will what? Be sad? I will rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Psalm 70, verse 4. Seeking God, we're talking about. Ready? Let's begin. Let's all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation say continually, let God be magnified in Jesus' name. Stop taking credit for yourselves. Always give God credit for everything that's good in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? One more, Psalms 105, verse 3. Let's all read. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek and require the Lord as their indispensable necessity. Look at that word, indispensable necessity. That's the way God wants us to treat him. Like we cannot live without him, uh, and that we need him in every area of our lives. Stop putting God only in certain areas of your life and start including God in every area of your lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 4. Seek, inquire of, and for the Lord, and crave him and his strength, his might, and inflexibility to temptation. Seek and require his face and his presence continually evermore. You see how he's telling us to seek him? Are we doing that? Amen? Amen? Okay, we'll see. Verse 5. <laughs> Verse 5. Earnestly remember the marvelous deeds that he has done, his miracles and wonders, the judgments and sentences which he pronounced upon his enemies as in Egypt. My brother and sister, God says to draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. Too many of us think that I'm waiting for God, and God is saying, I'm waiting for you to come to me in Jesus' name. God is always waiting for us. God is always here for us. We need to understand this in Jesus' name. James 4, verse 8. Let's all read, please. Ready? <clears throat> draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, 
you double-minded. It's important. We're going to see a little bit more of this in a, in a moment. But he, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Hebrews 4.16, Amplified. Please, ready? Ooh, ready? Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive what? Mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help. Come be just when? When we need it. Come boldly to God in Jesus' name. Don't come afraid. Oh, I don't know what God is going to do. God is our Father. Come boldly to God with your issues in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So now this is important. Now we're going to start fine-tuning this. That we need to draw near to God with a sincere heart. Not just a heart, gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy. Amen. You want to make sure that you go sincerely and you want to see his goodness. You want to see and learn about his love. You want to see and, and learn about his wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of us have made prayers to God and we thought we were sincere, but all we wanted, we just didn't want to die in what we were going through? As I shared once before, at 3 a.m. in the morning when you're spaced out, or in this case when I was spaced out, and uh, I think I'm going to have a heart attack. I don't know how I'm going to make it in the morning. Uh, and what do you do? You're in the bathroom, and then you see the toilet, and then you just hug the toilet, the coolness of the toilet, the porcelain on your face. Say, God, if I don't die, I swear to you, God, that I will never do this again. How many have said that prayer? Okay, right? <laughs> and then you didn't die, and three days later, where were you back? At the same throne, doing the same thing. So were we sincere? The first, we weren't. We just didn't want to die. We were not seeking him sincerely. We just didn't want to face the consequences of our choices that we made. And God, we can't play God. We got to come to him sincerely. God, I really want you to teach me and, and, and correct me and, and, and give me uh, the life that you want for me in Jesus' name. Stop playing God. Amen? Too many of us are playing God, and, and, and again, we can fool ourselves, we can fool other people, but we can never fool God. He knows that we're seeking him sincerely. He knows that we're doing something, coming to him to please mom and dad, to please the wife, to please the girlfriend that you want to conquer, uh, or, or, or if you're doing it because you need God in your life and you want God. Amen? Amen. Let's confirm this. Hebrews 10, 22, please. Ready? Let us all come forward. And draw near with what? True, honest, and sincere hearts. In unqualified assurance and absolute conviction engendered by faith. By that lean, leaning of the entire human personality on God. In absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Having our hearts sprinkled and purified from a guilty evil conscience and our bodies cleansed with pure water. Can you have an evil conscience? Yes. Can you have evil thoughts? Yes. Can you have an evil heart? Yes. Yeah, so it says stop that and come to him purely. And, and you need help, and God is willing to give us that help in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So it's important. Why does he want this? Because the Bible says those who seek God this way will understand all things. If you're having trouble understanding things, it's because you're not coming with a pure heart, with a clean heart to God. You're coming with your motives, with your agenda. Proverbs 28, verse 5, Amplified. Let's all read. Ready? Give it to me from Amplified, please. 28, 5, Amplified, please. Ready? Evil men do not understand justice, but they who crave and seek the Lord understand it fully. Isaiah 55, 6. Look at this warning that God is giving us. Ready? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him 
while he is near. Do you know one day it's going to be too late to seek the Lord? One day if you kept on, if I would have kept on doing those 3 o'clock mornings prayers, you know what would have happened? I might have not made it the next morning. You follow me? So some of us need to stop the game and get serious seeking the Lord sincerely in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. One more. Uh, the Bible says seek God first and then everything else will be added onto us. And too many of us are seeking other things and then we put God in place. Matthew 6.33. Ready? Please. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. My brother says that God wants to give you all things and we're going to see that. But he doesn't want us to be controlled by things. He wants us to seek him and to make sure that he's in right standing in our lives. And then you're going to see how you're going to be able to handle all the blessings, all the things that God is going to manifest in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen? So let's look at this uh, now. Ask, seek, and knock. That is the title for tonight. And now our, our foundational scripture, Matthew 7, 7. Ready? Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. What, what does this mean? Verse 8. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. But you have to ask, number one. You have to seek after you've asked, and then you have to knock, which means we have to go after it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Three things that we have to do. Some of us stop at asking, and then we don't seek it anymore, and we don't do the knocking. Amen? So the three things that we have to do, ask, seek, and knock. Okay, verse uh, 9. Or what man is there among you? I'm sorry, did you skip verse 8? Or you, you gave it to me. Verse 8? We did it? Okay, verse 9. Or what man is there among you? If, he, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? He's asking a question. Verse 10. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11. And if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Hudson Church, God wants you to ask him for things. But the most important thing that you can ask is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus the Christ. The most important thing that you can ask for is to get a, to know the Holy Spirit, to get to know God's love and experience it for yourselves in Jesus' name. And the most important thing is to learn the word of God, his way of doing things, his way of being right in Jesus' name. Amen? So this is important, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So the Bible says, and pay attention to this, that you should not seek good things for yourselves. What? Do not seek good things for yourself. What it's going to be telling us is seek God because of God, and then good things are going to follow you, will come to you from God. Amen. But look at the statement I said. The Bible says, do not seek good things for yourselves. Some of you Bible scholars, you've never even heard this one before. 1 Corinthians 10, 24, Amplified. Ready? Let's all read. No, give it to me first from New King James and then Amplified, please. Ready? Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well be. Now give it to me from Amplified, please. Let no one then seek his own good and advantage and profit, but rather each one of the other, let him seek the welfare of his neighbor. So examine your prayer, nice, your prayer lives for a moment. Most of your prayers are for yourselves. Most of your prayer, God, help me. God, help me. I need this. Instead of God, help that person. God, bless that person. God, bless me so that I may be a blessing to other people. That's the way we're seeking God with a sincere heart. But many of us are seeking God with a selfish heart, and that's why we don't get anything from God. Because our motives are incorrect. So it's important. Stop putting your mind on your issues. Put him on the kingdom of God. And then he will take care of your issues better than if you were on top of your own issues in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Come on, folks. Romans 8.31. Ready? What then shall we say to all of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? 
who can be our foe if God is on our side? Do you know that God is on your side? And God wants to give you all good things? Hey, come on, that, that, that's, he's on your side. But we have to seek him first. Verse 32. He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him, being Jesus, freely and graciously give us all other things? So what's our problem then? Why are we so frustrated? Why are we not uh, enjoying life as Christians? Because we don't understand, we're not asking, we're not seeking God correctly the way he's teaching us. And that's what this message is for in Jesus' name. It's important, Hudson Church, that God is love. We need to seek and learn and love like God loves us through Jesus. Not like the world loves us. The, the world loves conditionally. You do this, then I love you. You don't do this, I don't love you. I love my mommy and my dad, my mom and my pops. Or, or the old man and the old lady, the old mom, not the old lady, the old lady's the wife. Uh, but why do you love them? Oh, because they buy me a car, they pay for my college, uh, they help me out. But if mom or dad doesn't do that, I don't love mom that much. I don't really, who, who does dad think he is? So we're, seek, we're loving them because of the things that they provide for us, instead of because God chose that man and that woman to be your mother and your father. Amen? It's a different point of view that we need to learn. So about love, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Ready? Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, Hudson Church. Love does not parade itself, and it is not puffed up. Verse 5. It does not behave rudely. How many of us know rude Christians? Okay? It does not behave rudely. Come on. It does not seek its own. You can't say that you love people and you're seeking just to please yourself. I mean, this much is for all of us, especially for me. So, uh, again, love does not seek its own. It is not what? Provoked. It thinks no evil. I don't know about you, but I think it's sometimes a lot about evil. <laughs> so I got to work. God is working on me still in my love walk. And I admit it, and I'm the pastor. All right? So love thinks no evil. So if you're thinking evil, instead of saying, God, get these wicked thoughts. God, help my love walk. I need to learn more about your love. Instead of God, help me to stop thinking these evil thoughts. Wow. That's what could be a revelation or a word for somebody right now. Verse 6. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Verse 7. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things, and it endures all things. Amen? So it's important that we need to learn how to love with the agape topic of love in Jesus' mighty name. So our time is coming short to an end for this program, uh, but I just wanted us to learn from Solomon, so that's going to be our homework. And what do we need to learn from King Solomon, but before he became king, how Solomon seek God in the beginning of his life. And some of us, when we come to the Lord, we see God, we go, we're so passionate, we're front row Christians. But as time goes by, we start getting beat up, things don't go our way, we start moving towards the back. We start moving backer and backer in the church. We start missing church services. We used to come, every time the doors open, we were here, and now we come uh, uh, just to the Sunday service, no more Bible studies. Then we start coming every two weeks, then maybe once a month, because, uh, again, we're losing that fire, that desire, that that heart, that sincere heart for God. And this message is to give us an awakening in our love walk with the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen? So Solomon was made king of Israel, and Solomon showed God through his actions of burnt offering and sacrifices that he loved uh, God and that he loved God's people. As a Christian, we must learn to love God's people. This is important. God keeps us here so we experience and show love to people in Jesus' name. And then lastly, through this story, which we won't have time for this program, is that we see how David teaches Solomon. And who was Solomon's father? Uh, David, a man after God's own heart. That's the only person that the Bible says that God says that this man has the heart towards me. And, and, and that's good news for us because Sol David messed up a lot. And David knew that when he messed up, he would always go to God. Some of us, when we mess up, we ask that person, please forgive me for my mess up. But we don't even ask God. God, forgive me for how I treated your daughter or your son. 
We need to always go to God, not to the other person. Uh, and, and David never, you don't, you don't see in the recording that, I can, that I've been able to find where so, David asks anybody for uh, forgiveness. He always asks God for forgiveness. And that's something that we need to put into practice more in Jesus' name. So just one scripture, 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. Solomon, 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. Ready? And just this one little thing that David said to his son, as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. And God is saying this to us right now. So as for you, my son Adriana, my son Danise, my son Julie. When it says son, that's not a masculine term. That's just a child of God. That so can be woman, male, or female, all right? So as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with how? With a loyal heart. And with what? A willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. So right now, God knows our thoughts. God knows, God, it's almost over and I can get out of here. Some of you might be thinking, Maybe some of you not. Some of you manage. It, it finished so early. I want more. How would you feel if your thoughts could be projected on that screen right now? Some of you, no, 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 no. I don't want my thoughts to be projected on the screen. So it's important. God knows our thoughts. We can't hide from him. So it's important for us to get our minds and our thoughts correctly through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Last scripture for tonight, Psalms 37, verse 4. I just want to finish up with this, giving you an uplift. I hope you were uplifted. Psalms 37, 4. Please, all the way to the end. Ready? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. All he wants you to do is delight yourself in the Lord, and he's going to give you all the desires of your heart. Isn't that good news? Did you learn something tonight? So praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for, uh, for uh, giving us some revelation knowledge on asking, knocking, in Jesus' name. Amen? So we wouldn't want to close the telecast without giving you an opportunity to invite Jesus to become the Lord of your life. So I'm going to ask you that are watching at home, at work, uh, wherever you're watching us, to please uh, repeat this simple prayer with me and say, God, I repent of all of my sins. I ask the Lord Jesus to come into my life, and I make him my personal Lord and Savior. I recognize that I need Jesus to be in my life. I know that Jesus was the Son of God, and Jesus came to pay the price for all of my sins. So I, I, I invite the Lord Jesus right now, and from this day going forward, if you, if you pray this prayer and you meant it, and you prayed it out loud, we welcome you into the family of God. Uh, we invite you to come to Hudson Church if you live near us. If you live far away, we ask you to ask God to indicate the right church for you to go and make sure that church is a Bible-based church filled with the Holy Spirit. They believe in miracles, and I know that the Lord will answer that prayer for you uh, in Jesus' name. So we want to close saying that God loves you, and we love you in Jesus' name. See you Sunday at 1030 in the morning. Have a great night. Amen.